cool aspect of it. Like, hooked me way more. I didn't think that when I started training, I didn't think I would ever even have a match. I was just like, I just want to train. And then, like, I had my first match, and I was like, oh, maybe I could, you know, do this next thing. It was just always throwing a new goal in front of me when I achieved something I thought I never even thought I could. So, your trainers were Johnny Devine and uh, Michael Elgin. Am I saying those right? Uh, Johnny Devine's my trainer. Michael Elgin and me, we came up together. I would attribute him with, like, helping me along the way a lot, but I wouldn't say he's my trainer. trainer. And had, you're having a match with him, or you had a match with him uh, the night before? Or uh, Friday. He yeah. This thing too. He gave you the Shiner. Yeah. The Shiner, nice. Yeah, That's yeah. where you got the so Shiner. We've, we've wrestled each other like 150 times in the last 13 years. Yeah. <laughs> this is just what happens when we wrestle. Because for some reason, when you're friends with a guy, you just. Everything's a little bit harder. And, 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 yeah, it's hard to kind of break away that, you know, you got to kind of. It's kind of like that cliche saying where you got to, okay, you got to drop your. You got to drop your personal at the door. Now it's business. You got to go in the ring. You got to give it your all. And then when you walk out both exhausted, you're like, hey, man, yeah. great job. You killed it. Thanks for this, though. I'm really kind of a little bit little bit sincerely pissed off about that. Well, I, I know if I slug him, he's not going to get really mad at me. Like, right. If you went up to him and hit him, he'd be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't hit people. I don't like to avoid confrontation, especially when everyone around me is, is way bigger than me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you and Ethan Page, you guys are also very tight. Monster Mafia, obviously. Um, we kind of talked about when we did your profile. Which uh, was great. It was gave us an in depth to get here to be ready for the interview. When we did your profile. We shared a clip of uh, you interviewing uh, Miss Altoot, I believe it is, yeah. and you were talking about how he kind of came up with you kind of coining the walking weapon together. Yeah. Walk us through that because I love the story you told, where it's like, "Oh, you're the Jason Bourne of wrestling. You can literally do everything." And then walking weapon. I mean, that is is so few and far because when you think of Jason Bourne, you think of lethal weapon. A walking wagon means, like, I'm going to walk in the ring, and I'm going to hurt you 15 different ways. Yeah. Uh, well, he started wrestling with the States more, and I was doing stuff around here. With that, like, I was already winning all the belts around here and stuff like that, and I was very fortunate to be able to do that. But uh, he had this thing called All Eagles that he came out with. He was selling t-shirts. It was good, like, long like, I need something like that. Like, I'm just Josh. Like, you know what I mean? I need, I need a hook. And he came up with that. And like, it's, it's just because, like, when I was wrestling, I was trying to be all these things that people were telling me to be. They're like, oh, go out there and have more charisma. Oh, go out there and be a little bit more flamboyant and do this stuff. And then, like, I was just like, my favorite guys that I gravitate to are like Fit Finn Gable, or Chris Benoit, like Down My Kid, these guys. Just, all like, they just got in the ring and they wrestled. And if that wasn't good enough, they would have not, like, been so successful. Like, it can be good enough to just be a really good wrestler. So I'm just like, Fuck it, I'm gonna do that, and that, that's what I did, and that's what he's like. Your business, and that's why you're the walking white belt. You're all business. Yeah, and like no matter if it's a cruiserweight, a heavyweight, all these guys, like I, I can adapt to other people's styles. Like I'm as fast as a lot of cruiserweights. Like I'm not like a little Oscar Ricochet, but like I can keep up with them. Like, you know what I mean? So, like, so in terms of all the matches you've had, because you've got so much credentials. I mean, I could list them off, but we already did that during the profile. So much credentials. The amount of gold that you have that you represent, it's huge. The companies that you carried. What do you say out of all these indie matches that you've had, whether it be title or non title, which one is one of the matches or maybe two of the matches that stands out to you as like, that's the match where I told the best story of my career so far? <clears throat> that's, like a, that's a tough question. I've had like matches in the past year where me and uh, Kaido Kiyomiya, he's that Noah JHC heavyweight champion now, he wasn't at the time he was here. But we went out and it was Kitchener and for PWA in front of 250 people. And like, we just had a 45 minute match. And like, we didn't know we were going to go more than 20. But like, everything was just, we worked so well together and had this chemistry. And by the end of it, it just looked like, it felt and looked like you knew that like, it was a competitive match. Like, the entire way. And the whole crowd was going through the well, When the finish happened, you know when they leave their seats, like, like, they were invested in it. But that would be the one that stands out. Like, it told the story for 45 minutes, and it was just... Yeah. yeah. Well, every match we've seen you in thus far, you've told a story like that and more for 40 minutes. I mean, we were here when you were anointed the interim Destiny Wrestling Champion against Loki and Aiden Prince, that triple threat match. We sat two rows, Steve and I from the front, and we were in awe of everything that you do because being fans of this business, sharing the same passion as you do, we're all about great story, man. We're all about men who can go in the ring and tell a story in, in 12 different ways. And that night, when you won that match, and we were actually honored enough to be one of the guys in the front banging on that ring with that shot of you holding the title, I felt the emotion you felt. Yeah. I felt I felt everything you felt. 
I mean, I didn't literally feel it because I know you probably had welts and you were sore to crap after that. But man, what a way to get anointed. Talk me, talk me through that moment when all the fans were around the ring and they were banging on the ring like you deserve it. Talk me through that. How did you feel at that moment? You see, like, okay, I lived my whole life. I don't know that I was being bullied my entire life or something, but, like, I don't have emotion. Like, I don't show it very often. Like, I didn't cry for, like, eight years. Then I had my son, and now I cry for everything. Like, yeah, I'm a weeper, too, man. I'm right there with you. It's insane. Like, commercials will come on, and I'll be like, hey, well, I have two daughters at home. Any dad daughter commercial? Any dad daughter moment? Yeah, I I bust a gut. Yeah, the, the, the second he was born, it just changed something, man. Like stuff like that, like winning championships and stuff. It doesn't get me choked up. It's like, but like having people like believe in me and like support me and do all this stuff, stuff like I, as I said, I never thought I would be able to do or imagine possible. It just happens, and it's just like it's a different time to happen. You know what I mean? Like it's just like. I wouldn't say contending because that doesn't seem big enough. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. it seems to me like you're 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 just taking everything as it comes, specifically because of um, what we wanted to talk to you about, which was uh, the main focal point of what we want to talk to you about, which was the letter that yeah. you had written. Of the fact that if if you can really, I was gonna I was gonna actually segue into it, but if you can actually even take us through that, if you can actually even take us through that, just the the whole. Everything that went into writing that letter to what made the change of I'm now I'm going from this to no I'm this I'm becoming the walking weapon. Well, the letter it was like uh, there was a fair bit of frustration in my life around that time because the guy had been wrestling for like a lot and a lot and stuff like that. There was talks and signings and like signings was all I wanted because I didn't want any border problems. Like I knew if I got signed, like I know that if I get into the states legally and I can work there, I can be a top guy. No problem. 100%. I, I know that. But like, there was just this thing that kept, like, I've had rugs pulled out from me all over the at the border or some stupid situation with, like, my contract getting, like, lost for two weeks and then, like, something not happening. Like, it's just, it's, you're victim of circumstances. So, like, that stuff would eat me up before, whereas now, like, I've like, taken it as a like, yeah. But But uh, the letter, I took, like, two weeks to write that. I knew I was going to drop it after being announced on the off of and I wanted to make sure that A, it was like everything was for the at time. And B, I didn't hold back on like saying anything. You know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, like, I wouldn't say I regret saying some stuff I said in the letter, but like it's definitely the realest thing we've written to that time. 100%. When we read it, we read it during when we did your profile, we read it. And we ourselves. Again, we, we felt everything you were feeling. And some of the comments that we got after were, I'm so happy that he didn't hang up. I'm so happy that he was able to come back and able to fight through it and able to get, get it safely. Yeah. Because when you have that situation happen to you, when you're staring down the barrel of, of an inevitability like that, you got to wonder. You, you must have had a million and one what ifs. When a doctor, one doctor saying, no, it, it can't happen again. You're lucky to be walking. Another doctor saying, well, you can do it, but you've got to be restricted. To one doctor saying, if I were you, I wouldn't even step in a ring or near a ring again. Yeah. So with all those variables in your head, plus I believe you just had had your son at that time. Yeah. So you, you had all these emotions. Now you got now it's like you've got this life that's more important than anything else. And you've got to make sure you provide for him and keep him safe and all that stuff. And you also want to be around and watch him grow. Yeah. So with all these things hanging on the line, like talk me through what what was, as it took you two weeks to write that letter. You, you must have felt almost every stage that you possibly could. You know, they have to say they have the seven stages of grieving. You must have literally felt all those stages. And in that letter, I could feel all those stages. I was, I was numb, to be honest. I was just like, where you don't feel anything. But like, you try to be positive, and you try to like, you try to say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to be fine with wrestling all this other stuff. But the reality is, at that point, I've been wrestling for, I think it was like eight or nine years, I think. Yeah, you debuted in 2006. Five. So five. Sorry. Oh man. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I listened to the, yeah, there was a bunch of stuff that was wrong. It was like you've had 562 matches. Like, I've had over a thousand matches. They just don't know where I've wrestled. Like, well, like, like I said when I did your profile, I said that we had to yeah. comb through a lot of the crap to get to the real, the honest yeah. truth of it all. No, I know. But like, it's just funny how like cage side seats or whatever. This me is this and all these. Things. Honestly, I'm glad you get to clear the air on all that because I don't, like you're literally we're we were reading it and going like okay, it's where that that seems like a lot. Like it's five. 62 matches, but I'm just like, wow, you really have had over like a thousand matches. Yeah, like my first year, I, I had over 100. That was my goal. Like, awesome. Uh, yeah, like none would be the way, but like 
I, I sacrifice everything to be a professional wrestler. Like, I've passed up jobs and careers where you know, by now I'd be making 150k a year and I'd be like, cushy and be like, yeah, or like an electrician, I don't know, my own company and do all this stuff. I've passed up so many opportunities for that because, oh, you want to give me Fridays off? So I'll be able to get to a show. Wrestling makes me happy. Wrestling is like my, my obsession. Like, people want to say it's a mistress, all this other stuff. But, you know, it's more than that. Like, wrestling is right up there with like, it just it fulfills. So like thinking I was gonna lose it was brutal. Like for somebody who like had, like a family member passed away and stuff, if it's like old age or something, just like yeah, people die. Like you know what I mean? Like it's upsetting. I miss them, but like I can't get upset about it. Like too upset about it. But, like, you know what I mean? Like not to sound cold or crass, but like it was just like everything was taken away from me. Like I would try to remain positive and all that sort of stuff. And, like. Yeah, and then once I had surgery, it was much different. I got the answers that it wasn't serious. It was a completely different bag of emotions. Right. Because it was like, I can wrestle now, but I just told everybody I can't for three months. And had a whole retirement tour and a retirement match. And like, everybody's just really busy. I think I was lying to them the whole time. Yeah, but everybody knows that doctors never, it's never 100%. We all know this. I learned that. Loud and clear with that. I was just like, I'm never listening to a doctor again. Like, I'll go get two and three opinions before I do anything. It's like, it's just, it's just best guess. Like, you go to school for 10 years and you're just like, yeah, I think it's this. Or they say, I know it's this. And then something happens and you're just like, no, it wasn't that. Yeah. And they hate you if you're a civilian and you're trying to tell them that, you, that this is what it is. But it's like, no, you're not a doctor, so you're not allowed to say that. Yeah. You're not allowed. Yeah, I just true. woke up and there was no neck brace on. And I'm just like, a nurse, what's going on? Oh, you have to wait for the surgeon. When's the surgeon coming? Ah, oh, sometime tomorrow. Cool. I just lay in this bed, not moving. Just like, what? I'm like, yeah, he told me, and I didn't tell anybody for six months. And I finally told Ethan Page. I was like, yeah, this is what actually happened. He's like, I'll come back. I was like, well, he did not even have stuff, and he pushed me back. He's like, I'm a real, like, in real life, I'm a real self conscious guy. I was bullied my whole life, and that's why, like, I'm quiet. Like, people want to say, like, whatever they get, like, I'm intimidated and all this stuff. I just, I'm not listening, I'm a watcher. Like, I just watch people interact before I let them into my circle. You know what I mean? But, like, that's how I grew up. So, like, I, I was just worried about how people would react to me, especially in like, today's day and age of wrestling. Like, if you do anything, kind of people just want to jump all over you sometimes. And, like, I just don't want to those guys. So, it was, it was just a weird bag of emotions. Finally, when I came back, it took like two or three months after coming back to me to really feel like, okay, like, I'm back in this. So, I guess our, our last question would be because, like I said, we all know you got a big night ahead of it, and we're going to loop this in with our review of the event tonight, which we know is going to be stellar. Yep. But where you are now, where you were, where does Josh Alexander see Josh Alexander in the future? I uh, will be making a living doing this one way or another. Like right now, I do make, make money doing it, but I'm stuck in Canada. But like, one way or another, I'll be working for a major company. But it's just a matter of time. It's right place, right time in this business. And tonight, I get an excellent opportunity to step away with somebody that's contracted with WWE and show that I can hang with him. I've been doing this for 13 years. Like, it's not like an ego thing, but like, I'm very confident in my ability to wrestle with you know, I don't get nervous anymore. I just know that this is what I do, and this is what I've dedicated my life to. So it's going to happen one way or another. And if it doesn't, I'm happy doing this. This is great. It's amazing. So, like, that's my next goal. That's the only goal that I can have left. Well, we can definitely say 100% that we definitely see that for you in the next, whatever, the next year, two years, whatever it is that you've been saying it nonstop ever since the first time we saw you in the ring. It's just like, this guy is going to be, and you don't say it, it's, it's very few and far between that you come across that in this, in this day and age, that you can absolutely see someone that for sure is going to be that top guy. Yeah, I mean, you're the whole package to us, and it's not, it's not we're, because you're on our show, we're kissing your butt. You took the time out for us, and we appreciate that. And we're here to be as honest and as candid with all the wrestlers we interview to all the fans we have all over. Yep, so and yeah, the, the fact is, is that if you, you don't mean it. Like, yeah, really, there's no point. Yeah, you are the you are the complete and other embodiment. And uh, we couldn't be more prouder to be Canadian, to have you representing Canadian strong style to the fullest. I mean, British strong style, yeah, it's cool. You know, Japanese strong style, yeah, it's all right. Whatever WWE's doing, right now they're changing their game. I, I hope that maybe this whole rumor of AWE and all these things that are happening, hope that lights a fire under Vince McMahon because we know what happens when he has competition. 
But all I'm looking forward to is seeing where you go and what you take. And for us to say that, hey, we had him here before he blew up because we knew. We knew before anybody else did what this guy.